Today, you're coming with me to the Tin Liquor Show. And before they hit the stage, we're going to sit down and get to know them. Welcome. 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 Welcome to the Soul Anarchist Podcast. To the Soul Anarchist Podcast. To the Soul Anarchist Podcast. A show about living life on your own terms. A show about living life on your own terms. And here's your host, Paul DeWayne. Tin Liquor is a genre-defying electronic music group from the Netherlands. Their massive success has been 10 years in the making. They've played on some of the biggest festival stages in the world, like Tomorrowland and Ultra. They've done remixes and collaborations with some of the biggest names out there, like Lane 8, Gabriel Dresden, Ben Bomer, and Dead Mouse. And today we're going to get to know Misha Hebor and Jordi Van Octoven of Tin Liquor. I hope I said their names right. Check out the show notes for bonus content from today's show, such as photos from the show and a playlist of my favorite Tin Liquor tunes for those who like what you're hearing on uh, today's episode. You can find that at soulanarchist.com in the podcast section. And so without any further ado, I give you Jordi and Misha of Tin Liquor. So how's the tour going so far in general? Really, really good. Um, being in a bus is um, very convenient and uh, it makes it more relaxed so if you're if you're done with your show you can actually hop into the bus and the bus drives you to the next place and uh, uh, we sleep better so you you sleep on the bus and then uh, you wake up you're in some you're somewhere else like you you go from uh, from the desert to like a rainy and grainy right yeah that you wake up in Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that must be a little surreal sometimes to wake up, you know, go to bed in one place and wake up in something so so different. A little bit. So far on your tour, what's been your favorite venue? For me, it was Brooklyn Steel for the live show, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the sound was really good and there was a lot of people that we knew and the show went really well. It, that all kind of connected and then all fell into place and everybody was happy <laughs> i love that <laughs> even the people that were grumpy before you know everybody yeah. smiled after the show it was good. yeah i want to know about your earliest memories of hearing music like way back in your childhood once what's the first time you really remember hearing a song and like thinking i have one yeah my dad gave me a tape uh a cassette tape and um there was a house song on it with a sample uh from back to the sound of the other ground back to the sound of the underground it was from a dutch uh like a producer and um he had like this many aliases and he made like this he made house music that was the first time i was like wow what's going on here so your dad introduced you to house music yeah yeah but wow. he didn't know because it was like a like a commercial like a like a, a lot of pop songs were on it okay like oh. rem or oh, so it was a mixtape well it was uh, like you know it was like your pop songs on it without you know and mixed mm -hmm. and then that, that one dance song stood out for me that was like new Wow. That was the first time. How old were you when that happened? I think eight. Okay. In 88. So that means I was five. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five years old. Five years old. <laughs> and uh, how about you? Well, I, I can't remember house music in general, but I, I remember... <laughs> just like, anything. Yeah, yeah. Just your very it's, first memory of music. Just, I, there's actually videotapes of me singing it when I was a small kid. There's this... Uh, singing? A, a folk song. It's about... Uh, it's called Siska de Rat. <laughs> and the song is called Krijg toch allemaal de kleren. <laughs> do, we, do we get to hear it? <laughs> no. Oh, come on. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but it's a Dutch, yeah. Dutch, and it was a film, and the song was the, uh, it's a sad film about a, a, a guy, and his dad is a fisherman, and he's never home, and his mom beats him, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it's a sad song. It's and uh, there's me singing it really loud on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and his wow. mom beats him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but my parents were my my mother is a bob dylan fan and my dad was more experimental like uh 
uh, church choirs to Kraftwerk he was listening to. So, you know, he was there was all music playing all the time. And uh, I got into contact with computers quite early because my dad is a physics nerd. So he was always interested in machines. And then I'm a teenager in the 90s. I was a teenager and that was kind of the rise of most of the dance music. So I just got into trip hop and hardcore and drum and bass and jungle and right. breakbeat it all at the same time and i loved but i also still uh, loved like punk and uh, gr uh, grunge and metal and so i kind of like i kind of liked everything and i still do you know they say the music you listen to when you're uh, you know 16 17 18 is like the stuff that really gets cemented into you that yeah. still still moves you when you're an old man yeah you know? so uh let, let's talk about that uh Jordy, what what would that be for you? Those late, you know, those coming of age years that yeah. Mini yeah. Vanilli, no Mini Vanilli, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> when I was sixteen, there was this uh, like, uh, like rave culture in the Netherlands was uh, Gabber music, and I started listening to that. Um, it's called it was called Thunderdome, and uh yeah basically it was like hardcore music combined with like gabber that and it, it mostly came out from the netherlands and that's what i started to listen to and uh yeah when i hear it now it's it's very i don't know it's it's not what i like anymore <laughs> but he still has the haircut <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, the bald haircut yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you've got one of those haircuts too i know yeah i know <laughs> uh misha what about you what i mean you, you already kind of touched on it a bit but like what bands were really lighting you up at around 16 18 years old uh i was a nirvana fan and oh, yeah. i was a tricky and a portish head fan and like the prodigy and, and the world stuff like that uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah stuff like that i wasn't listening to that at all no that's funny i was more like into that was more the alternative side of music i guess uh, right and still am you know i think it had to do with where i came from i came from a like a small village and i think a lot of people didn't know what was out there yeah i discovered it everything later so but yeah and you said that it's the, that's the period with, with cements into your brain and i, I think uh, i agree <laughs> You know, it's the first period where you for for fall off for the first time. You know, you rebel against your parents. Right. You you create your own identity and uh, you experience a lot of things for the first time. And you know, yeah, yeah. also music. <laughs> I mean, t tin liquor is so pretty compared to a lot of these sounds that, <laughs> yeah. you, know, that you guys are talking about. What? Yeah, but also quite there. There's melancholy Golly in it certainly know? and yeah. and all the, even like in gabba maybe as well but <laughs> no, well the, it came later but. yeah but there's a lot of melancholy in the music i like and i think that's the connection for me do you think any of those more aggressive sounds might ever creep into a future project or he has I mean, a well. My drum and bass group well, act okay. is quite loud. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he already did but that. But there is there there are drum and bass sounds in our music. Yeah, and like certain growly draw bass sounds that come at the end of a bar sometimes. Well, I do. Let's the thing. I do like having sometimes tracks that kind of like are a little bit louder and, and yeah. But the combination of the two that we're able to play it because you move me and the track like hypnotized even after each other you know <laughs> that makes it really satisfying <laughs> that you combine those worlds and people are not like what the hell is this is this yeah and, yeah that's good <laughs> it's, it's still tin liquor <laughs> yeah yeah I heard on an interview that you played drums. Well, we both uh, used to when we were young. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like how how far into that did you get? Yeah, I, I played in uh, fun fun far and uh, like a marching band. I, I played in a marching band in yeah. the beginning. Yeah. I played snare, and then uh, there was a teacher, and he said, "If you wanna if you wanna do the private lessons, you can you know come to me." And then uh, I did that, and then I. I had like two friends and we started a band 
I think I was, if I developed drumming, I could become really good, but I didn't. So, I, you know, the, the fact that we were a band and then practicing and then the, ba the, 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 the lead guitar was, uh, the guy was sick and then I was like, ah, this is annoying. And then, and then I discovered the electronic side of the music. Okay. So I could make everything by myself with a computer. And I was like, okay, let's stop do the drums and then let's move further. But, you know, I, I still like to drum from time to time on a real, like, drum kit. Yeah. It's really satisfying, like a good snare. Like, ksh! That's what yeah, I really like. It's more visceral. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, and as far as your drumming goes, like, how far did you take that? Uh, I started drumming when I was, like, 11, I think, in... Uh, I played in a few bands, like a punk band and a poppy Nirvana. band and stuff like that. I don't know, but and I was in a, and then eventually we found a better drummer than me. <laughs> and then I started singing, which okay. I can't do anymore. So yeah. I was singing in a band, and uh, we were pretty cool. I'm actually still looking for an, another drummer. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, uh, it was the same time when I started the drum bass act with my brother and a high school friend, and we were this five member group and then uh, we were, i was like i'm either gonna do like d take this seriously go into the studio and record a demo or i'm gonna quit because you know because i have also had this electronic act in there there was so much less hassle yeah having like five people wanting the same thing is yeah, just exactly. insane <laughs> it's so, so nice to sit there and make music on a computer so yeah but i think we're both were pretty good drummers Okay. On, a, on a certain level, but you yeah. know, I haven't sit, sat behind the drum kit in, well, 20 years. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of lose the, and I drum on pads, but it's also really different from an actual kit, you know. For so. sure. guys we've got a couple of fan questions for you uh mike calvert asks what has the anjuna label meant to your career well they gave us uh, a foot in the door especially when it comes to the american region i think there's such a big fan base here uh anjuna family so uh yeah they they dragged us along the bus and gave us our biggest platform so yeah love that uh mike also asks um any uh, fun backstage stories about shenanigans with other djs that you can share really i want to know oh. the ones you can't share <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure the one funny thing was uh we were we were performing in uh amsterdam in the a place called the melkweg and then after our live show, we were sitting backstage and then there was a, like a show after our, there was like a night show after our, our set. And then uh, all of a sudden, like a guy walks past the door and it was a uh, boy's noise. And I was like, oh my God. And he was looking in the room and I was like, oh, I'm such a huge fan. And then that was kind of funny because he was like, oh, who are you? We just performed here. Like, we are Tin Liquor. He was like, oh, hey, hello. Yeah, he, <laughs> he turned into this little fanboy yeah. all of a sudden while just selling out <laughs> as a headliner to club. He ran out. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Of course, there's a lot of stories, but they're not really interesting, you know. People get drunk. People sure. Do, people do silly things, but, you know. <laughs> we, sometimes, we sometimes just sleep on couches backstage yeah. before a show. It's very glamorous. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, related to that, who's your favorite other artist in the genre to hang out with? I mean, I get along well, really well with Ben Boomer and Lane Nate and Yoto. Uh, I mean, a lot of the people in Anjuna, are, you, know, you know, you're on the same kind of, you're living the same life. There's, so there's always a, a connection. And it's strange to meet people all over the world and you see the same faces. That's that's the weird part. It's like, when was the last time I saw you? And then, you know, it's the other side. Yeah. It's weird. Also, so. lately, I, I had a show in Switzerland, and then I was playing with the uh, guys from Buka Shade. They were, like, in the scene for more than 20 years, but uh, 
those guys are really fun and uh, it was really nice to watch them. So we're going to play with them and we, oh, I can't say that yet. Oh, Ooh, super almost, secret. Oh, oh. new something. So we're yeah. going to play with them anywhere soon, <laughs> yeah. somewhere in the near and, future. Uh, uh, yeah, for me to be honest, like I'm a, quite a, a Kolsch fan uh, and uh, I played with him on a festival, I think last summer with Paul Kalkbrenner and then but he was such a nice guy, just like down to earth. I don't know. Yeah. It was really nice just to be able to talk for him for hours about it. also personal his personal life and it was just you know not knowing anyone and then all like sharing all these private things uh, in the end of the night it was uh, yeah. yeah he was being such a big name in the industry he can also become a bit of an asshole and then he was super friendly love that yeah uh, Jordan Sundell asks what's your favorite collaboration you've done so far for me. It's a personal thing. Uh, Be Here and Now is a, a huge favorite for me. Uh, I created the, 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 the melodies and the string part for that song. And then that was actually the first song with Nathan Nicholson. And then he wrote something very personal on that song. And then, it, yeah, it mixed, it blended really well. And I'm still like, when I play it, I get goosebumps everywhere. So yeah. I love that. Major? Uh, yeah, the thing when it comes to Nathan Nicholson, he's such a good fit when it, when it comes to our music, like the way he writes his lyrics and the subjects he chooses and just how he delivers the sound that he has in his voice is just, I don't know. Uh, I wish I had a voice like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you do, but you wouldn't sing no. for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, there's a, there, I think there's more. I think all is lost for me because it was also uh, kind of like a secret. I didn't tell Jordi that I uh, sent the track to Nathan. And we were in the last, these final stages of uh, our album. And then he sent back the vocals. And then, you know, within a day, that song was kind of done. Oh, love uh, it. and they, it, like a little gem like that out of the blue uh, uh, is beautiful and uh, also uh, Rebirth with uh, Hero Baldwin Mom. Month? Of course because we were d- kind of done with the album and, but Rebirth didn't have a vocal yet and then uh, the deadline was almost there and we were uh, just came out of the studio and then we got those vocals via on the phone yeah. while we were having a beer at like 11 in the evening and then we were listening to this song and we're like yep album's done nice. <laughs> this is the cherry on the cake yeah love that <laughs> One last question, dream collaboration. Who's on your wish list? It's the same for both of us, I think. Yeah, we can name two. You name one. For me, it's Tom York. Uh, I'm yeah. a big Radiohead fan. Right, <laughs> right. Makes sense. Yeah. For me, it will be uh, Tame Impala. Ah. Would be interesting. Yeah? Yeah. What would that look like for you? Or sound like? Well, like Tin Liquor sounds with his voice. Okay. And he could even like write with the song if he wants as well. So yeah, would be nice. Like a little bit of a guitar in it. He can call you. <laughs> <laughs> Please call me. Yeah. Yeah. You want to leave your number here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of my favorite things you guys have done is that collaboration with Dead Mouse, Luxuria. Let's talk about that project specifically. How did that come about, first of all? Uh, well, we released uh, two two EPs or I don't even remember if it was in between yeah. the two we'd released music on that uh, on Mousetrap and uh, he was just looking for remixes yeah uh, we got asked to do some, one something we, we actually first made a like a bootleg from Monophobia a song with Rob Swire and then they said well we already have remixes but you know let's see what we can do and then Luxuria came and then we got the stems okay so he sends you the stems and then how much, like, what's that collaboration process like? Does he weigh in a lot? Is he kind of micromanaging? Or does he just give you the stems and just wait to see what you come up with? 
Yeah. Yeah, the last. Yeah. 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 We didn't even know he liked it until it came out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's it gorgeous. Is. Yeah, no, but it's funny. It's like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I think that's also uh, give him credit. Like he plays most of the, most of the time, he just plays his own music. Right. right. And that's what made Dead Mouse, Dead Mouse, you know. Uh, Did you actually know that he ended his sets? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So then that's the that's oh. actually the the moment that you realize he actually likes it because he started playing it. It's like a special thing, you know. So, but uh, for him, he also wants you to have your own identity. Uh, so, you know, if he interferes too much and it becomes more like a Dead Mouse song, he wants it not to be a Dead Mouse song, I think. Right. That track, it sounds like Dead Mouse has his signature sound. You know, like you can you can hear it in the first three seconds of anything he's done. But you guys do too, and that that's what was cool about that 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 remix is both of your fingerprints are like squarely on it. It's quite bizarre that that that, that that's a fact. I just never know what the signature is, but people know what the signature is. Nobody really talks about it. It's, it's a like you can it's hear. It's a secret sauce. It is a secret sauce. Like I, I couldn't even really describe it either, but I but I know it. Like <laughs> what kind of sauce, Michel? <laughs> How secret? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's the same. Like he said, I don't really. It's a personal touch. Yeah. Even in Tinlicker songs, sometimes you can hear it's him. Sometimes you can hear it's me. But the oh. good songs are for me. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all the great songs are his. <laughs> I, I guess it's a combination of, of because first when you create a song, you you actually write down melodies. Yeah, and after that process, I mean that's already you're like actually converting a, like a, a feeling or a thought into music. So that's the first signature, and then the second would be the sounds you're using. So we use like a lot of like similar sounds because we have the same taste the sounds that we prefer are different sounds that, than other uh, electronic acts like you know it's yeah. a little bit less uh, 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 it's always kind of like uh, more rounded than it is really spiky <laughs> for example <laughs> sure. what I really yeah. like to do it, I mean if you you have this tool where you can download like this sample library, sample library online. And when, for example, I look for a kick, I never would search for a progressive house kick. I will always search for maybe hip hop or like something really else. Like, like they explore all the other music, other sounds that you're n n not using. Yeah. So we sometimes end up with hip hop kicks and hip hop snares in our songs. Interesting. Yeah. So speaking of the creative process, there are a couple of schools of thought. Some say that it is best to just wait for create you know, inspiration to hit you and then, you know, act on it when it comes, whether it's three in the morning or, you know, whatever. And there are some who say, no, you show up for work every day. You show up at the studio at 9 a.m. every day and you just get to work and inspiration will meet you there. You know, what what are your personal approaches? I think in the end, actually, like, making the time so like a more like a job going to work every day will get you further than waiting for inspiration because that then because uh, if you keep on waiting and you have like this long period where nothing comes then you become like oh my god nothing's coming yeah. uh, but you also sometimes have to be if you're in the flow be like okay i'm just gonna finish the, what i'm doing Yes. Uh, uh, put it put down what it what it where it, like what is in my head and then you can leave or and and for him it's more he is more when an idea comes he has to like grab his laptop write down the melody blah 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 and i'm more the guy that goes to work from nine to five <laughs> okay i, I usually become... wait but that's that's uh, a privilege now because i used to go like to the studio like for 18 hours a day just to struggle with like being there and not getting able to make like a good song. 
and now now I can wait because I developed it to have like this to make music it's a tool like the tool you the software you have on the laptop or a, a synthesizer is just a tool but I figured out in all those years how it works so now when the idea comes it's like I have like I wrote I write down a song in five minutes and then we can work it out in in a day yeah and then we have a demo so yeah, yeah. But, and then another thing that, that for me like if you're and especially in the beginning you're more like oh let's work till whatever late at night you know have a few drinks and then you go home when you're getting older when you want to maintain a relationship with anyone <laughs> <laughs> you have to kind yeah. of structure your life otherwise uh, it will never work that's single yeah. man's work yeah, it the is. The whole just like well, you know, it's work just when single inspiration person, hits. It's yeah. like uh, then becomes really uh, a lonely and well egoistic uh, job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you guys have each other. Yeah, but still, <laughs> I mean, but we, but we also work quite a lot alone. Like, yeah, you know, especially when we like we split when it comes to DJing. We most of the time it's just one of us, and then the other is back home. So, and uh, a lot of songs start with one of our ideas and you work a tune out and then we finish it together it's hardly ever that we wait make a track from scratch that was in the beginning it was in the started. beginning yeah but then we had time because nobody loved us <laughs> <laughs> oh, back accurate. in the day <laughs> so yeah. when you when you have an idea that hits you like you know maybe you're at the gym or you're someplace where you don't have your computer with you what do yeah. you do? Do you just like sing it into your phone? Yes. Or how do you, is that it? I, I use the voice memo. Yeah. And then I'm going to say where I am and then I'm going to say which like root key it is and then I'm going to like, you know, do all of the mm -mm -mm stuff. And, and I feel very embarrassed doing that. Do you have perfect pitch? No. Or you're just kind of guessing like this feels like it's going to be an F. Yeah. And, well, okay. I, I'm going to like um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm actually when I'm doing the the singing, I'm finding out which key it is, and then I'm I'm Aww. just saying every. I'm just try to put every information in the audio note so I can remember. So it's in my head, right? And then when I come home or where, wherever I come, I just grab the laptop and I'm Let's get right back to it. Yeah, yeah. How about you? When inspiration hits, and you're not at work, you're not at your desk, you're not. How do you how do you deal with it? Yeah, I, I take a mem like a, my iPhone and all. Most of the time, it's actually when I have like the. Most of the time, it's for me. It's ar arpeggio riffs. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm in the shower, it's like fuck. <laughs> 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 and I don't write down the key. I'm just trying to like sing it in, and then the next day, be like, what? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's funny. <laughs> but but in the end, like for example, uh, like, I think Fractal is a good example. We were both in the studio like making a song and then we basically said to each other we should you know have this simple like simple melody and then the, f the first three notes were doo -doo 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 -doo. and he was like yeah that's good <laughs> yeah, yeah. end of the story but yeah <laughs> i love that So speaking of the shows going well, one thing I've wondered about is, you know, you, you guys talked about rather than doing DJ sets when you're on these these live shows, you're performing your tracks yeah. up there. How much leeway do you have performance wise, or is it pretty tightly scripted still? Parts of the the songs are scripted. I mean, the length of the songs are kind of scripted, and but you know, the, the elements we play, those are. Uh, yeah, we can alter them and we have all these effects so we can alter all the sounds that come in and out and yeah, yeah. It's, it's becoming like uh, the the live show is developing every every time we do it yeah and every time we bring something new or and change stuff and um, it makes it makes it like a playground and it makes it more like I, i'm more nervous to uh, for a live show than doing a dj set because you know i've been DJ, djing and misha too for more than 20 years right and live show doing a live show is different there's so many more variables at play yeah and, it, and therefore it feels more rewarding when it actually when you succeed and people are happy you know the, the tension of, of a live show and to, when it, when you're done with the i think it's more like a concert 
and how the crowd reacts is different than the DJ show as well. Like, you know, it's like this, it is constant feeling grows and keeps on growing. And then there's a climax in the end. And with DJ shows, people are kind of like kind of dancing and people walk in and out. And with this concert, right. everybody kind of stays inside until it's over. Well, and you structure the songs differently, you know, from a DJ perspective, versus mm -hmm. like just a song perspective it's like you mentioned in a yeah. in a live show that a song has an, an end that you build to yeah. yeah 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 it's it's totally different we have like we we have pauses between songs and um yeah it's more song based i guess yeah yeah but yeah. we don't have pauses all the time you know some songs go into one another sure so it's kind of like a combination of the both you don't want to have a stop every song you know that becomes kind of on electronic <laughs> right yes, right yeah. yeah so who does or excuse who does <laughs> who does what <laughs> who does what <laughs> how you do <laughs> let's try that again <laughs> who does what <laughs> i do nothing and he does everything no, no. Perfect. All right. <laughs> uh, uh i play more of the percussion element things i have like this uh, sample uh, like a machine and i trigger stuff and but i also have a keyboard so some songs i'll play melodies and stuff but he yeah, and plays I, more of the melodies and i played some of the lead sounds on the keyboard and uh, i have like a like an arpeggiator which i like trigger all the arpeggiators we use in all the songs i mean there are a lot of arpeggiations in Okay, so you're, so you're doing those like live rather than just yeah. triggering sequences that you've already set up in the studio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we trigger sequences, but we play stuff on top. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't play the whole thing by yourself. I, we're not like a, you know, I <laughs> that can't, would be interesting. I can't play bass and drums. Right, and all. Right. It's so there's elements that are, and of course, of like there's a like, there's a huge element that sh that we shouldn't forget. Like we have to enjoy it as well because we do it because we like it, and I have to enjoy it. Like if I am doing too much. I would be like focusing on everything, you know, and that's. I also need to see what the, how the people react and how they feel about it. Just enjoy the moment, being on stage, making your music. Yeah. How much liberty do you give yourself to like stretch tracks out, or do you, you know, what's that like? Yeah, it's. We we can do a lot more. Yeah. We can make, uh, you know, we can build in like little surprises. Like, I mean, people think the song ends, you can actually extend the song if you want. Like, do you ever do that in real time? Do you like have signals you give each other? Like, hey, let's let's loop this a little couple more times. Let's build it. It's, or do you really kind of stick to this? Well, the, it's, the, it's the format? We, we're doing it a little bit. And then it's I've, I've, probably it's going to grow. Yeah. You know, if we control everything, we're going to you know, extend and develop the set for later. Yeah, for us, it's more like, I mean, on the show itself, we kind of stick to what we planned. Yeah. But like the day after, be like, oh, let, let, tomorrow let's change this, and then we'll change it, and then you know. Okay. Sometimes it's uh, hard to uh, change a formula that you've done a few times, and then all of a sudden, especially with jet lag, you're like, oh my god, where am I? Oh, it's still going on, you know. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah. uh, <clears throat> yes, having too many surprises built into your thing it might not be good for the performance. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but, First of all, you two come from different genres originally, drum and bass and more progressive house. And now you've, you're doing this thing that doesn't necessarily fit into the boxes very neatly. Yep. And you know, EDM is a world that's all about boxes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so as you've become more successful, have you felt pressure externally or internally to like conform to a style? No, not at all. Yeah? No, there's no pressure for me. I mean, if I speak for myself, um, we try to, even in the dance industry, we don't like to listen to all the dance music, what's out there. We I kind of like focus on what we do. And sometimes it takes a while to, to get to a point where you have like a new, you're developing a new sound. And then after a while, you can, you know, can make an album with that sound. Right. And we always try to like to mix everything to blend like genres because we we like a lot of music i like a lot of different genres so 
we, we like to blend that. Yeah, the only thing I think the confirmation sometimes we struggle with is the BPM. Because you know, mm. our music is kind of, for the last uh, X amount of years, is kind of stuck to this 122, 125 BPM. And if you actually start changing that, that means that the songs that you do, because we also still like DJing, it will be hard to play. You know, if you make a track that is 110 and then you lose a lot of the energy and then, then you become more like a band. And uh, that's the only thing that we're kind of like, sometimes we're like, you were still a dance act, you know? Uh, right. And then uh, we like, parts of me want, want to stick to the dance act and then there's parts of me like want to become more like a band. So it's sometimes that can be an eternal struggle also between us. It's like, yeah, I want to make it sound more indie or uh, he does. And then I was like, no, I want to make it, you know, cheesy. I want, want it, yeah, well, not cheesy, but <laughs> no, no. I want it to actually like, <laughs> still like have a big drop or something like that you know it's like be punchy instead of like jazzy drums you know so <laughs> right uh but uh having both of those worlds that's actually what cr makes our sound you know that constant palette of combining everything together for yeah. sure uh, jordy you mentioned that you don't listen to a lot of dance music is that like a deliberate thing to keep your palette pure or is it just you're just interested in a lot of other things it's a it's a combination of both because I'm, I'm not here to see what other people do and then make something out of that i'm i'm actually here because i like to make music and you know i don't want to get distracted too much because what's with what, what is out there already so yeah, i, I want to be i want to keep it you know saint is that the word to make sure that i'm not like infected with all the stuff what's out there right yeah yeah, you, yeah, you don't want to sound. You, I mean, it's not like a competition, you know. You don't want to make something that's popular because it's popular. You want to make music that you like making. Uh, I think. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's such a. I love. I love what a purist you are about this. And 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 then also still, you always struggle with the fact that you you know now you're more successful. It's like, will people come to the show? But so far, I think in both our careers always kind of listen to what we felt like making and it and that made it successful enough for us to uh buy bread and cheese and peanut butter so <laughs> <laughs> <It's all neat. laughs> yeah, exactly i do you ever have label people coming to you saying hey guys like uh, great job on the last record but we could really like really use a banger this next time mm, not really yeah like for most of the music we made there 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 are not like a lot of there was not like a lot of feedback like I, I guess people trust what we do yeah and then because you know for me i i find it always weird to to make a song and then you send it to a record label and the record label says no nah, i don't like this because you have to change this and this and this and i'm like why don't you make music you know it's <laughs> It's me. I'm making the music. If you don't like it, just don't like it. It's like yes or no, like nothing in between for me. Right. And yeah. uh, I mean, there's two sides of the story. Sure. We don't really listen to the labels, but it also meant that in the beginning, nobody really wanted our music because we didn't sound like house or techno. Nobody knew where to place us. So it took a few years for people like, ah, let's release this. Yeah, and then it became uh, successful enough, and uh, we kept on doing what we wanted to do. But finding or yeah. finding a place to release music—that first, I mean, it took years for people to actually understand what we were doing. Right. Yeah, and the, the genres changed as well. If you, for example, go to Beatport, like first it was house, and then it became trance, and then it was progressive house, and now we're in melodic techno. And now it's melodic house, like, and we don't really care about it, but it happens like externally, yeah. and it's funny to watch.
Uh, so at what point did you did it become clear in either either of your minds that you were going to move forward with music become more serious about it <clears throat> for me it was i was at university yeah uh and then i found myself spending more time actually trying to make music than studying and i did a creative study so i was like why, why? well okay let's take a break because that's all we started releasing music and people wanted us to perform and then i was like i have one year to go i have an internship to do and then my finals so if i start doing going into that last year i won't have time to do any music and i was like let's take a break and then take it from there and i just never went back nice and then I had a really big student debt loan. <laughs> so don't do what I did. <laughs> no, no. Duly noted. <laughs> well, but I wanted to say one. It's funny. I like. I think maybe the same for you, but I never made music because I wanted to make a living out of it. It kind of just it, it became that way. You know, the people liked it enough for us to do shows and then slowly it was like okay i'll start making money maybe i can you know put more effort in but it was never it's t it's weird it's still not a, a dream for me to be be a professional musician it's more like it's i really like doing it it's funny you know i don't think i want need to make a, a living out of this it's more it's just it's just is <laughs> that's such a beautiful and, thing yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people want this because uh, with, you know, uh, the wrong uh, idea, like they want to be there and then, but do you want to be there to be seen or do you want to be there because you really want to, you know, to perform or there's a huge difference between those two. Oh, different motivations. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, core yeah. motives. Yeah. 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 And of course you have to make bold decisions, you know, you have to be like, okay, now I'm going to do this full time and then see where it goes and you know live from yeah. from nothing for a while and then see if i like it because that's the thing you're it's hard work <laughs> yeah i mean uh, jet legs no sleep and then on stage yeah. if you forget where you are and be like oh <laughs> yeah. what am i doing <laughs> what am i supposed to do <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh it no, was a, it was a inside joke. Inside I joke. could tell. <laughs> <laughs> so there are people. There are, will be people listening to this who are on that precipice. They're making music. They're having some success. But the next step is to cut. You know, leave the day job or leave the the school behind or whatever, and make that leap of faith. What would you want them to know? Ooh, there are, uh, there are many things to say, but. Firstly, you have to really like what you do. And then, you know, the change is, it's something that comes to you. You don't really decide, like, there comes a day if you, if you really want this, then, and you work really hard for it, there's this, there, there comes a day then that you have to make the change, you know? And, uh, and you, you don't really decide about it. I don't know, it's like, it's like a gut a gut feeling maybe you know when things are settled up um, it's a hard it's hard to really say like do this or do that to people yeah it's more like you have to be okay with the sh really shitty days <laughs> and then still kind of be like ah oh, i still like doing this yeah right. don't don't give up easily yeah, no but if but you feel like i it's think if the beginning is no. like uh, really hard already, you know, then uh, it might not be for you. But, you know, music is also not about making a living out of it. It's like if you enjoy making music, you should just keep on making music. One, one thing about it, a uh, thing about it is, uh, you know, these days it's really easy to get all the tools. You, you go on YouTube, you can watch everything. How to make, how to sound like Tin Licker is even on YouTube. But you, you, and you're watching it, and some guy is like producing a song, and it's like, yeah, you do this and do that, and it, and it looks really easy. And then I think nowadays it's really hard to say I'm going to do this uh, and be really obsessive with one thing. You you can choose between everything now. There are too many choices, so it's I think it's harder now than when we started because there wasn't so much back then. So I think you know focus on one thing and excessive choices can be stifling to creativity actually yeah it's it's kind of weird 
a lot of times constraints actually compel creativity. Yeah, it can That's be really frustrating. And you're like, why am not? Why it's not working for me like this? Yeah, because people want so fast be be there, but it's it's not a fast thing. You you go slowly there. Yeah. Well, the thing that you said that landed for me is it finds you. You know, I forget the exact word you use, but you basically are like, just do your thing, and like it, it may come to you. You know, the opportunity or the next step, but you can't you can't like reach out and grab it necessarily. The road is long. Yeah. It's the same in a relationship. If you know, if you if you have a good relationship with somebody, you have to build years. And if you build, then you will have a, like a strong uh, core and, uh, to move on when it's going wrong as well. So, and that's it's the same with music. If you want to be in the fast lane, you're gonna drop easy. You know, drop really really fast as well. So we we've been building this for ten years. You know, and I think that's why we we are here where we are now. Right. They they as they say, overnight success, ten years in the making. Yeah, like, and before that, yeah. you know, we have, we both yeah. had careers before that. Sure. So, um, but that that ten year figure is interesting because a lot of artists, when you hear their stories, you find out they've been like hard at it for a decade before yeah. you ever heard about them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. very common. Yeah. yeah. If people think if the people that have success, if you can call it success, but they get on your radar that they're all of a sudden there. But, you know, you weren't there when they were playing for six people in a downtown right. alley and right. half of them were their friends, you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. One of our first like gigs in the Netherlands was in a cafe. Yeah. And people were like, oh, what are these guys doing? Can you please stop? Right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll regret this someday. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, well, no, that's, yeah, yeah. You have to, well, that's the thing. You have to be able to deal with those moments that people say, I don't like this, you know. Yeah, but we were having fun. Yeah, we were having fun. <laughs> Yeah, like Tinnaker is not only us; it, it's somewhere in the air, and I, and we are like the captains of the Tinnaker. But you just, uh, you know, you're making music, and all of a sudden you're on stage performing, and you're like, "How did I get here?" I mean, and you you got there clearly because you wanted to do the stuff what we do. Yeah, but it's funny. It's like a snowball. It's like it keeps rolling. Well, hey, fellas, this has been such a pleasure. Thanks for carving out a minute to chat. Likewise. Thank and, you. Uh, excited to see the show tonight. Thank you very much. Misha, Jordy, thank you so much for that amazing show. We all just had such a fantastic time out there in the audience. And thanks for the great chat beforehand as well. I hope the rest of the tour is a huge success for you guys. If you've enjoyed some of the things you've heard during the episode today, you can find a playlist of my favorite Tin Liquor tracks in the show notes for today's episode at soulanarchist.com in the podcast section. And you'll also find links to everything Tin Liquor, their YouTube, their Spotify, their Apple, everything that you need to get your Tin Liquor fix. If you've enjoyed today's show, please share it with a friend. The Soul Anarchist podcast can be found on YouTube, the best place to find it, honestly, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, or your favorite podcasting app. All right, fellow Soul Anarchists, keep up the fine work. Love you very much. Thanks for joining us. And until next time. <laughs> <laughs>